Greetings adventurers, this is Travis the DM again with another update. We are excited to announce that we'll be in attendance at Pod Tales, a free festival for independent fiction podcasting. That will be taking place in Cambridge, Massachusetts on October 20th. It is a free event to attend, and we hope to see some of you there in person. As we will be premiering our adventure campaign for Dark Dice, Domain of the Nameless God, at the event. So come meet me, the voices of Rowena Granite Pike, Father West Pike, Sister Caverns Fall, and Philgia the Witch. We will also be premiering a live audio drama spectacular Tales of Horror as The White Vault and Liberty. The show will be at 4 o'clock p.m. on October 19th, the evening before Pod Tales, and we hope to see many of you there. Tickets are available online for $15, and a link is provided in the show notes. Also present at the Pod Tales event will be our dear friends from the Reckless Play Guild, Sean and Eli from The End of Time and Other Bothers. Set in the same fantasy world as Alba Salix, Royal Physician, and The Axe and Crown, two great shows that we also highly recommend, The End of Time and Other Bothers is an actual play podcast with a very high production value and a team of great improvisers in the show. But you don't have to take me at my word. The End of Time and Other Bothers, an improvised fantasy role-playing podcast set in the world of Alba Salix. The world has still ended. Do you guys see how pretty it is outside, though? So, you give presentations of some kind. This extremely devastating explosion was, in fact, a celebration. And you, my good lady, ladle cheap foodstuffs out to people. All right, fairy, demon, sit down and shut up. Thank heavens, we three have been chosen to be the saviors of the entire multiverse. Do you see that minotaur sitting out in the food court? What minotaur? He was right there. There were some zombies, but Black blew them up. I climbed a tree. And we're Black, skipping ahead, and, and we're skipping we're, ahead. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Three normal dweebs thrown back in time to an era of magic. What is this place? <laughs> sent on an adventure more absurd than they ever could have imagined. Egerton, you didn't even need a fairy cake. Why did what? you need a fairy cake? Because I stress eat sometimes. <laughs> That's The End of Time and Other Bothers from the makers of Alba Salix Royal Physician. Listen and subscribe at otherbothers.com or search for Other Bothers in your favorite podcast app. So consider joining us at the free Pod Tales event in October. Chat with us on Facebook on the Reckless Play Guild Facebook group. And while you wait for our next episode, be sure to check out The End of Time and Other Bothers. Speaking of which, let's get started. Do you seek him? You have found yourself among those who roll the dark dice. What you are about to hear happened long ago, a story brought back from the edge of oblivion, dutifully transcribed and enhanced orally to better captivate your attention. Previously, the team set off from Ilmeter's Hope to find the town's missing children. Instead, something else found them. With one of their number missing, can they survive the next watch? Will the team's resolve hold up? Will odds roll in their favor? Fear the strangers in your midst. Never play games of fate. Dark Dice, Chapter 6, Dying Embers I'm, I'm bottling it past these guys. I'm off. I'm gone. Don't run. Don't go off into the fog. I don't have scissors. It's fine. Ah, oh, crap. Only little legs. Only little legs. Father West Pike wakes up very grumpily, throws himself up and starts sprinting after Rowena. He hears the conversation and everything that's going on. And as he approaches, he grumpily says to her, please put down your weapon, Fliya. And then he casts a spell command on Soren Akright. Soren, stop. What does that do? If he succeeds, he ignores my command, like a, like a jerk. Well, he just continued running off, like a jerk. Like a dick. Uh, all right, I, I, I stop and I uh, raise, raise my hammer, which I was dragging behind me, and I shout the word, approach! And he just keeps running, and there's like a visible, like, distressed look on my face, like, no, please, I can't run. Father Westpike, in his nightclothes, appeared, yelling. 
I totally have a night shirt. And probably a very typical dwarven cap, which I'm assuming has a little white bulb at the end. I'm gonna collect my items because if we're gonna be running off after something, I do need to have my armor. So I just run out with like armor in my hand and my my sword, not my sword, my warhammer in the other hand. <laughs> and I'm so angry looking because I just got freaking stabbed. And your shield was also somewhere in the mix. It's like slung it's, over it's my how, back. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's how you have all of your uh, all of your basic armor. You just have it all like sat on top of your shield and you're holding your shield and you're sort of like- It's like a serving plate yeah. with all my stuff in it. Okay. Um my turn. I turn myself back into a wolf and try to run after Sauron. As Filgia ran, her seamless transformation increased her running speed, allowing her to almost keep up with Sauron. The rest of the party could only watch as her white form was quickly lost in the thickening fog. Yeah, I'm gonna be the voice of reason here and use my voice of reason. Thaumaturgy. I'm gonna make my voice three times louder and just shout, Stop! Stop! Don't we all remember the buddy system? This thing is trying to get us all apart. If we get separated, we're all going to die. I stop in my tracks and I look over my shoulder, hearing his voice. And then I wag my tail and trot back to him. Filgia witnessed Soren jump beyond the overturned corpse cart before giving up her chase. The faint jingle of Ayas's bell audible as he passed the far side. I'm a bit confused he would do that, but I, but I go back to the group because that's what he just told me to do. And why the fuck are you still standing outside in the rain? This does not count as a rest. Did you see where Sauron went? Okay, sorry. Then I just saw Sauron stop near the cart that we just... Where we... That... That we turned over with all the dead bodies over there. The bell jingled again. I thought I heard something jingle. Anyone want to investigate that with me, or do you want to go back to sleep? We need to find Sauron. I agree. He just stabbed me! And we're gonna go after him? Yeah, but you're right now. She said that... I've seen worse. She said earlier that... Wherever you Sauron. grew up, remind me never to go there. Yeah, the Darklands followed by Strathman's Hold. You wouldn't like either, really. Different flavors of horror, but both were pretty abysmal. Earlier, the witch said that it wasn't Soren. She said it wasn't him. We have seen the Silent One take forms of other people before. What happened? How did Soren just all of a sudden stand up and just start stabbing Lady Cavernfall? First he went onto the roof for some reason, and when he came back down he looked at all the people in the group well, while all of you were sleeping in a very creepy way. But I just assumed wait, that's what they do. What? Wait, wait. So you're telling me that you took your eyes off him? Yeah, I was writing my journal. I was just listening. I'm going to look up at the roof. I assume he's not there. Soren was nowhere to be seen. All right, okay, you took your eyes off him. He could have gone anywhere, and he's not up on that roof. So let's start again with where we know you saw him last and try and taste those steps. Because if that is a Doppler, like I think it is, then it doesn't matter where the Doppler's gone. We've got to find Soren. means he's in trouble somewhere. So let's try and trace his steps from where you saw him last. I... I saw... Is anyone really good at this tracking stuff? I don't want to take any responsibility for finding him, or more importantly, not finding his tracks. So. Well, yeah, I could. I also have a lamp and some candles, so we could get some light on everything. Especially as I could... I can also make some flames brighten and make it, like, so we can see a little bit better. Alright, let's just go for speed and find in him. Okay. Because he... We'd, how, how long ago was it that you saw him, for sure? I mean, the last time you saw him, for sure, was when he was climbing on the roof. So we'll, yes. How long ago was that? Um, I, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half ago? Okay, then we've got no time to lose. So, um, <clears throat> you're a mighty tracker, and I'll give Ines a pat on the back, and I'll give him inspiration. Oh, thanks. That didn't even rhyme. She's desperate. Meanwhile, Soren awoke to find himself in a grave, buried under familiar decaying faces and putrefying liquids getting into his hair and nostrils. I am going to attempt the climb. Ah, yes, you seem nimble. Can you... Quickly, climb on top of the roof and see if he is still there, maybe lying down so we can't see. Yeah, can do. If we're lucky, he is simply unconscious. Yeah, make sure everyone keeps an eye on me. Uh, I'm assuming the rest of us know what the jingle of the bell means. Fifteen for the climb. Ayas had a difficult time making his way up the wet, steep wall. And as he scaled perhaps a dozen feet up, he clearly saw Soren stagger into the building through the far door and collapse into a corner. Immobile, except for heavy breathing. Notably, Soren was covered in black and red liquids. In that case, I'm going to shout and again make my voice louder and tell everyone, um... Guys, guys Soren's been painting the town red. He's, he's... well, someone's back someone's in the camp. Father Westpike, who had been thinking about strutting towards the grave, is now turning around like, Oh, God, what? How? 
How? Yeah. Oh, run inside, wherever the hell this is. I'm assuming the whole group moses up into the camp. Oh, yeah. The team jogged into the shelter of the building and stood before a very disoriented Soren Arkwright, who was breathing heavily but had risen to a sitting position. Yeah, I've, I've climbed down as well to make sure that I'm still, well, me. Buddy system. Soren's eyes were lightly unfocused as a mixed expression of fear and confusion overtook his face. I'm very suspicious. Can I make a perception roll or something? That would require a perception check. Oh, <laughs> natural 20 plus 4. Damn. Soren smelled like death itself. A mixture of rot, bile, and putrefaction. However, Filgia's keen senses could detect that the smell was due to whatever was on him, but not his actual smell. I don't see marks of where my arrow thunked into him, so this isn't the one I shot. What happened? What happened? What's the last thing you remember? I... I was on the roof. I... I think I saw something out in the mist. The fog seemed to come closer, and then I... I... I don't think I was, but I think I had a, a vision of hurting Fuga. I, I don't, I don't remember anything after that. Is everyone okay? I give him the angriest glare. <laughs> I'm just gonna like kneel down in front of him. Are you sure that's everything? Because you or something that looked like you stabbed Sister Cabin's fall, and she didn't look too great when I left just now. She's much better. She's recovered, but. I've seen worse. Are you sure there's nothing else you remember? I certainly don't remember stabbing Sister Cavern's fall. I I can only apologize. I'm sorry. I I only remember fainting or passing out, and then I I woke up in the pit, covered in the bodies that we we put in there. I I don't know what happened. He doesn't have any marks on him from being hit with a hammer, nor from a crossbow bolt. Pretty smote. Soren... Soren, I'm going to ask you not to resist this. And I go and I grab his knife. I'm going to take it out of its uh, wherever he has it, and I'm going to inspect it for blood. I don't think it's really going to matter much in the long run, but enjoy yourself. I won't resist. Thank you. As Father Westpike examined the knife, he could plainly see that the sheath was covered in blood. But as he pulled out the weapon, he found the blade clean. Um, you say you lost consciousness while on the roof? I think so. I, I must have. I, I just blacked out. I don't remember. Did you see anything out while you were on the roof? Before you lost consciousness? I think I saw a figure out in the fog. I I think it was the silent one with the eyes. But then it walked away and I was debating whether or not to wake everyone up or not when I... I don't know. So, let me get this straight. We... You climbed out of the pit, that's why we heard the bell jingle. But the bell was jingling at the same time I saw you coming into camp, so... If that wasn't you jingling the bell, what was jingling the bell? That'd be a Doppler or a silent one. And didn't someone... I think if you went unconscious, it looks like you were just laying in the pit. It's not got any of your arrow runes, doesn't have any of your hammer marks on you. Your knife's not covered in blood. So whatever came in, did its dead, and whatever you were, when you blacked out, you must have been put in the bottom of that pit somehow. Are you wounded, Soren? I don't think so. I'm going to cast pre-devastation on him to clean him up. Just so that all this gunk and crap just comes completely off him so we can see what's everything underneath. One square foot at a time, Rowena used small blasts of magic to clean Soren's soiled clothing and face. Yes, pretty much, yeah. Like, the whole hair just flies back and everything, you know. <laughs> Thank you. So I need to turn back. Are we safe enough that I can turn back? <sighs> I, I, I can only do this twice a day. I think we are fine. I think the Silent One has done his worst for now. You're very optimistic, cousin. It comes with the territory. I still didn't get my full rest, though. Filgia returned to her tiefling form, her wounds from before reopening and bleeding. <coughs> I have only 4 HP of 24 left. <coughs> oh. Heal me! Oh my, oh my god. god! Heal me! Well, I can heal you up to 12. I can't go past that with my abilities right now. Oh, have Grættu sár þessara nornar svo hún geti haldið fram vilja þínum. <coughs> well, thanks. Is anybody else in the team damaged? Unusually, I'm okay. I brought myself back to normal after the lung puncture, so we're all good. Hmm. <laughs> it's good to see that you're uh, safe, Lady Cavernfall. Lung puncture? Gods, I'm sorry. I will also heal myself real quick. I don't want to have any ugly scars on my arms or anything. I say... Game of Ears, we were Zorvik, we Tiamo, and move my hands over the wounds to heal them. Eleven head bombs restored. Soren, I think you just were a victim of the, the Silent One. I think 
You are not a bad person, but the unfortunate consequences around you are piling up. I hope you understand that. I do. I vote we tie him up for the rest of his watch. I vote that I go back to sleep. I agree. Yes, please. Yeah, me too. I have a set of manacles. Does someone want to hang on to it for me, just in case? I present my wrist. Yeah, manacles? It's better that you get tied to one of us. Shh, no, not. <laughs> you know what, Rowena? I trust you. <laughs> Go ahead, shackle yourself to Now you say him. it like that, um, I don't feel so comfortable. Vice choice. I simply shackle uh, Sorens' hand together. My wrists are their own body system. And then I offer to help him find a comfortable position to rest in. Thank you. I want to go back to sleep. You have to finish your watch. My watch totally ended the moment that Soren stopped Sister Cavern's fall. Actually, I thought he was about to wake her up anyway. <sighs> you must all be imagining that I'm still talking because I am most certainly asleep. But I'd also like to take up a more defensive position while sleeping this time. I'd like a corner with my shield in front of me. Defensive sleeping position. All right, so if I understand this correctly, Cavern falls asleep. Innskeepers will sleep already, so out of the remaining four of us, who's gonna sleep or take watch? Fligir, you said your shift is over, I, but yes. You... Oh, I'm already asleep. Oh, Mr. Miller, we really shouldn't. Your wife could come back at any moment. Which your wo- watch is not over. I am very sorry, but you're gonna have to stay up. And Rowena, I am sorry to ask this of you, but you are wrong- younger. You are in your prime. Can you please? Keep watch with her for a little bit longer. You can sleep during our watch. But then you'll be doing the watch on your own. I'll have you just by sa- by my side and I will wake you at yeah, the but... uh, most unopportune time. Yeah, but I don't want to be... No, don't give me that look. Okay, fine, but you have to put your hat back on. And I sit down in a grump like a teenager. Thank you, Rowena. <laughs> you brought this upon yourself. What, me? I didn't do nothing. You were born. <laughs> But seriously, I've seen your fortune and you've clearly done some stuff. No, 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 no. You see, I think you have my fortune mistaken with someone else's. Maybe we can sit this watch out in silence. Uh, I think if you laugh like that again, you'll wake everyone up and freak me the hell out. Fine. Fine. I'll open my book and I try to read some light poetry just to keep my mind off of what's happening. Filgia opened her book of poetry and began to read. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Uh, Wait, does that also heal my stress? Over the course of reading, Filgi recovered five stress damage, her spirits lifted by the distractions within those pages. However, Sister Cavern's false thoughts were haunted by her recent experience. It's not every day that a fellow traveler stabs you in your sleep, and the experience put her quite on edge. Okay, give me a second then. Uh, 16 plus 3. Apparently, Sister Cavern's fall was used to being stabbed by her friends in the back, and found this to be no different. Meanwhile, Rowena sat opposite of Soren and her cousin, crossbow at the ready, aimed at Soren. Her watch started off with wide focus, but as Soren's dreams caused him visible distress, her focus gradually narrowed to the man in front of her. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, probably. Rowena was thus required to make a constitution saving throw. Well, that's a, that's, that's a no, that's a six. As the minutes rolled on, Rowena glanced from Soren to her crossbow, and back up to Soren, and she blinked. She hardly noticed that her blinks gradually got longer and longer, and despite her best attempts, after some time, she was unable to open her eyes. This team! This team! Meanwhile, as Vilgia continued to read poetry, a small black and white rabbit appeared in the Martians, wiggled its nose, and pulled itself up from the pages of her book. Oh no! Is that funny? It landed at Filgia's feet as it left the book and looked up at her. The black and white rabbit had unmistakable freckles on it, formed from the letters in the page that it had freed itself from. It began to hop toward the mist slowly. It hopped once, twice, then stopped. It hopped twice more, glancing back at Filgia, its little nose wiggling. Buddy! Buddy! The rabbit looked down discovering the only blade of grass that Filgia had seen in the village, and it began to slowly nibble. Oh, it's adorable! Oh, look at it with its tiny little ears! Oh my god! Finished with its little meal, the rabbit took three more hops toward the graveyard. It was clearly going to leave the safety of the campfire. <laughs> it 
it's okay. It's what rabbits do. It literally came out of your book. I mean, no, your wife can't join us. That's gross. I don't mind. That happens all the time. The bunny hopped away into the mist. Did it have a name? Did it have a poetic backstory and a legend of its own? Philkia would never find out, because as she looked back toward the team, she noticed Sister Caverns fall struggling on the ground, violently grasping at her face. Her shield knocked over. The very flesh over her face appeared to have melted, covering her eyes, nose, and face. Holy fuck! Air holds! Air holds! Philkia pulled the dagger and quickly carved into the flesh of Sister Caverns fall's face, creating breathing room for her mouth. However, in her zeal to rescue her friend... The dagger had knocked some of Sister Cavern's false teeth out in the process. I, I can't fix those. I, I have some wooden ones on me. The warm blood on her hands. Sister Cavern's fault could breathe again. <gasps> oh, thank the old shadow. By some strange stroke of luck, the bunny rabbit had also returned and was now licking the blood off Filkia's hands. Normally that'd be creepy, but I think I'm actually okay with it right now. I think... Um, I'll get you your new teeth in a moment. Just... I, I need a second to catch my breath because that that was super fucking creepy. Don't get your face all covered in flesh or whatever. Or, um... It was at this moment that Philgia woke up. <gasps> what? I look around confused. Philgia looked around the cramped confines of the building and the camp they had made. Everyone was still present, and Sister Cavern's fall still slept soundly with all of her teeth yet intact. As Philgia slowly returned to her senses, she realized that the licking sensation in her hand had continued. And as she looked down, she saw a hideously emaciated figure kneeling beside her, licking her hand. A sickening grin of rotted ivory over putrefying, dripping black gums. The tongue seemed to loll uselessly, wedged between some of the teeth. What the fuck? As Filgia shoved the decaying figure away, it bit her hand harshly, blackening the skin around the wound immediately for 7 damage and 15 sanity damage. As she flailed and kicked, its lidless bloodshot eyes grew larger and larger, until the bloated man's face formed that of the silent one, the tongue falling off its face like a flap of torn meat. Thunder wave time! Everyone's gonna get smashed in the face with a thunder wave. This is gonna be terrible. <laughs> Everyone present, except Rowena, the spry dwarf on the other side of the room, took 15 damage as the sound of thunder crashed through the room, sending gear, fire, and bodies in its wake. However, as the explosion of energy calmed and the heroes all awoke, Do I? the silent one was nowhere to be seen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump up like, oops, <laughs> I'm awake. <coughs> I put my chainmail on. <sighs> okay. I know this looks bad, but I can explain. Yeah, please do. But what did you do? I, I saw a guy. L like like the faceless one. The, the silent one. Uh, right. It looked like a disgusting human, and it grew. The, and it grew. The, the, the eyes grew bigger, and it filled its whole face, and it was terrifying. So he bit my hand, so I woke everyone up. <sighs> um, well, uh... Well, it's, it's over now, so... Um, you're, you're good. You both fell asleep, didn't you? Yeah. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you, but yes, I might have fallen asleep. Look, I'm really sorry. I didn't. Sorry about you that. You know, some people can take watch and not actually fall asleep. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. You're not. You're not wrong there. But um, I've got this. Don't worry. I put my hand on Rowena's shoulder. Do you got this? I've got this. I'm fine. I've got this. I've, I've got this. I mean, you know, people slip and fall, you know, that sort of thing. Are you guys okay? You know, before I met you guys, I was able to sleep without getting hurt. <laughs> and then I showed up here. Oh, come on, it's only been like one day. Let me... let me cast a simple prayer of healing and then we'll go back to sleep. And the two of you, please, please try to stay at wake. How, how long has she got left of her shift? An hour. Oh my god. We're all gonna die. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna cast a prayer of healing. It'll take ten minutes, so I'm assuming the rest of the group is gonna go back to sleep. Not me. I'm not going to sleep. I'm gonna get up and walk around. Father Ljósa Himni, grætt og sá svo dagar okkar eru ekki taldir. Neyðar okkar eru strembar og við þurfum blessun þína. Father Westpike prayed for those around him to be healed, for their mission to be successful, and for the children to be free of harm. And as he did so, their wounds began to heal. 
and the pains and aches began to dull. Ten minutes passed. Out of character, everybody will be getting 11 healing. Need that. Alright, I tried to go back to sleep for my last hour of rest. As Rowena starts doing her walk around the camp, I... I pull out my book of poetry. <laughs> yep, I'm walking. If if I see the witch's little book of poems, I grab it and close it and give it to her. Like, no reading, please. That defeats the purpose of having you on watch. It was the only thing keeping me awake. I know a little burning that would say otherwise. <clears throat> I guess I will just have to wait and look out into the mist and keep an eye out instead of looking at my books. With great difficulty, Philgi was able to maintain her grip on consciousness by following Rowena's slow walk around the perimeter and chewing on individual pieces of hay she'd kept in a satchel. Despite the intolerable boredom, the hour passed by without incident, earning Father Westpike his eighth hour of sleep. You know, I no longer feel exhausted. Hours up, okay, who will take the next watch? <sighs> Me and him. Before he wakes up, I'm going to, like, in his gear, somewhere that I can hide it, I'm going to put my lucky cow chop. In, in whose gear? I'm going to put it into uh, Father Westpike's gear, but I want to try and hide it so he doesn't find it. But this is not, like, in his shoes, right? No, 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 because that he might notice. I, I want to try and hide it somewhere, like, within, like, the soft padding or something, so that it's, it's in a place where the armor wouldn't sit on, but somewhere he wouldn't necessarily notice it. Unbeknownst to Father Westpike, Rowena had hidden her lucky cow chop under the inner pocket of his gemson offering him advantage on death-saving throws. As Father Westpike woke up, he could feel some of the weariness of his old bones as his sleep was... <sighs> yes, uh, so there were a lot of disturbs uh, disturbing. Disturb... I don't know. Disturbances. Disturbances. Big words. As Rowena and Sindri began their watch, they both needed to make constitution saving throws to stay awake. 17. 21. And thus began the dwarf phase. What were they doing during their watch? I'm gonna, like, place some kind of a rock or something, and I'm gonna be looking out at the rain over the graveyard. I assume it's basically just outside. I place another rock by my side, and I, like, pat it, telling Rowan not to come. Uh, alright. I'll sit down on the rock, pull the cloak a bit more about me. I assume it's cold and wet and horrible. Yeah, it really is. So you're both sort of staring outwards from the giant open spot in the wall. And when she pulls the cloak, Father Westpike gives her a concerned look and says, I, I've seen that cloak move twice now. Did you? She's, uh, she's blatantly not looking at him like, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> I'm maybe going senile in my old age, but I have not lost my mind yet. So how about we drop the pretenses? Yeah, it did. Um, I'm going to pull the cloak up, pull my, one of my sleeves up to show him that the, the veins are like all blue and horrible and gotten much worse. <laughs> Uh, over the short space of time. He tenderly touches your hand, but pulls back when he feels the, like, the bulging wings. Um... How old are you again? Me? I'm, like, my early 80s. You're just a child. Yep. This cloak does this to you? I didn't know how much it did until I, uh, really, really used it. Um, I'm assuming you haven't had the need to use something so destructive before. I've felt it once before, um, when I was in danger, it... Like, whenever I take, whenever I bleed, it kind of... So you're going to make it sound worse than it is. It, it absorbs some of the blood, and then it can do things. It can attack on its own. But whenever I do it, it just... I'm, I just feel drained. But this last time that I used it, it, it just seemed to have a lot more power than before. And that's when this happened. And then she points back to the arms. You know, that is the sign of aging. The one thing that magic can't cure. Um, You're withering away. I'm fine. I mean, I'm fine. It's not a problem. But that's not everything. Last time I ate, everything just... I mean, I tried to hide it, but... Last time I ate, everything just tasted like rot. Like dead things. Like ash in your mouth? No, definitely rot. That kind of, like, <laughs> spory feeling when you're breathing spore mushrooms. Just eating that. It was... Everything. It's all I can taste. I got the clock from Dad's stuff when I left. Um, Your father? Eh. Hmm. I don't know why he had it, but I just grabbed the nearest thing when I got told to leave. So I did. And this was it. Uh, Rowena, you know your father is... He deals with the unkindly sort. I suspected. But... I've personally not met your father, but I've heard many stories of him. I've heard less... I've heard less... Uh, what should I say? He's what? he is of the Cortalum race. He's of the Cortalum clan. They aren't good people. 
They are greedy people. Oh. While I don't partake in this part of the clan's actions, they trade in stolen goods, artifacts from vaults and from traders from other countries, cursed items. I don't know why they do this. I'm assuming there's gold in it. Well, that's all they ever seem to be interested in is is gold and pushing that whole thing on me. I, that's not me. I couldn't kill this. I'm glad to hear it. <sighs> I'd rather you be your own lady than be the daughter of your father. Hey, I mean... Unbeknownst to the others, I woke up a few, well, about 30 seconds ago, having heard the word Cordalum. That's not... It's not a word I like to hear, but I kept my eyes closed and listened hand unconsciously moving towards the crossbow, tail twitching toward the dagger. Can I roll perception check if I notice that his breathing change? With a 22, Father Westpike noticed his sleeping companion tense up at the word Cordalum and shift uneasily, clearly feigning sleep. I put Rowena on her back, gently. I'm not going to tell you to take the cloak off. I'm not going to tell you to leave it behind. But I want you to think twice about using it ever again. I only used it because I didn't think I had an option. I don't know. This is not going to sound sound kind, but death is a better option than the corruption of evil. You think I should don't not? Let the flame in your, don't let the flame in your heart go out in your pursuit of power. I, I don't want power. I've never... Uh, power becomes a responsibility, and that's definitely not me. I don't, I don't like that in any way, shape, or form. I don't even like doing these watches. I mean, what if something goes wrong, it's all my fault. I don't want to be here doing that. I don't know it's what like to do. Gent- Father Westpike is like gently stroking your back. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I... Would not be sad if I saw that cloak left behind. So I've taken note of what I've heard, and it sounds like even though they're related to the Cordalums, it doesn't sound like they're actively working for them at the moment. So, well, I'm going to be suspicious of the cloak for now. I'm going to go back to sleep because I deserve it. I'm just going to, like, rest my head on his shoulder. I'm assuming she's going to drift off to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to say a prayer. There's a ljúfi like a nýður, laðar gefur ró og frið, hugurinn a hóvært byður að hafa áfram sólskinnið. Blómin spretta og ilma aftur, angin í lofti fer. Öllu stýrir æðri kraftur, undursamlegt lífið er. And I repeat that over and over again as she drifts away. And I keep repeating it as I stare into the fog, holding hard to my hammer, ready to strike anything that dares come close to her. What does the uh, prayer mean? It's a, like a spring prayer of sunlight and like the growth of plants. Nothing happened during Father Westpike's shift. Silent beyond the conversation that had taken place and the silent prayer repeated by the old priest. The team awoke to a slightly brighter scene. However, the heavy cloud cover and repressive fog still blocked out the majority of the light. The team began to don their armor and prepare their spells for the day while eating a quick breakfast. All ate, except for Rowena, who couldn't find the strength to overcome her affliction. We saw the track of children and men through the town past the inn. I'm assuming we're going to follow that in in continuation of this and ignore the loss of Colm, if I remember his name. So Sword and I had a little chat last night while I was pacing, and it sort of told me where to go. Just let me take in all my rope and bell first. <laughs> reclaim rope. Body system. You should reclaim the rope using the body system. That thing is probably still out there. Mm-hmm. Lady of Bunnies can come with me, right? Uh, sure. I was gonna sleep in, but uh, whatever. What do we want to do about Soren? I'm gonna unshackle him. Are you doing better? I'm... He is not my buddy in the buddy system. <laughs> well, I don't feel any different, but I certainly don't want to stab Sister Cavern's Fall anymore, so... Did you ever want to? No, of course not. Insight check. 16. Rowena felt like he was telling the truth. Yeah, he's on the level. And with that, Soren's hands were unbound and found themselves unconsciously drawn toward the cursed dagger on his hip. But they could not linger there for too long, as the team quickly began to pick up camp. Dark Dice, Chapter 6, Dying Embers Starring Caitlin Statz as Sister Savarai Cavernsfall, Peter Lewis as Soren Arkwright, Ethor Vithyarsson as Sindri Westpike, David Alt as Aya Sinski, Kessie Rilinicki as Flagia the Witch, Hem Cleveland as Lady Rowena Granite Pike, and Travis Fengroff as Dungeon Master, with transcriptions by Hem Cleveland. This episode's dialogue was co edited by Travis Fengroff and Sarah Baczynski, with sound design and mixing by Marissa Ewing. This is a Fool and Scholar production. Thank you for listening.